Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is change the material to shadeless. You just have to select this here, and basically the entire cube, all the faces, will be rendered as whatever this diffuse is. There's no lighting, there's no shading, there's no shadows. It's straight up that. Um, and next we want to add the lines around it to make more of a cartoony look. And in the render settings, you have to turn on freestyle. Um, and then the extra step you have to do is in the scene settings, in under freestyle line set, click the plus to add. This is basically a setting. It's a group of settings for freestyle. And you can mess with this, but I'm not going to cover it here. Right now that I've done that, it's got this basic outline thing it's doing. Um, so that's what we want. Um, I'm going to add some other objects and give them their own shadeless materials. You're going to have to check shadeless for every material you make. Um, and it's doing freestyle to everything. Um, okay, so we've changed the materials in the render settings to what we want. Um, but now I'm going to show you how to make a really quick character that works with the style. Uh, first, I'm going to go into edit mode and press Alt-M to basically delete all the vertices and make one vertice at the center. Um, so that's what we have right here. We're going to use the skin modifier to make a really simple character, basically just a stick figure. What the skin modifier does is it's building this uh, mesh around the vertice we have. Okay, so I can extract from this, and you might want to use a mirror modifier just to um, just to make it easier on you. I can extract from this and basically make a really simple stick figure. Um, let me move this so I have more space. Uh, but you want to make um, multiple vertices because later when we make the armature, we're going to want to be able to control these limbs more than just one bone for the entire arm. Um, and for the head, what you can do with the skin modifier is when you have vertices selected, press Control A and you can basically just scale things. So that's what I'm going to do for the head. Okay, so this guy's pretty much done. Um, let me throw material on him. And... Okay, now we go back to the modifier settings, and... Um, we, we need to, in edit mode, select basically his pelvic bone, um, and click mark root. Uh, that's just going to tell it some information to make the armature from. And back in object mode, press create armature. Now we've got this great little armature. Um, it's already set up. Um, you can animate it from here. Um, how we're going to animate is down here in the timeline, select auto keyframing. And wherever we are on the time timeline, it's going to create a keyframe for every change we make to the scene. So, in pose mode, we're just moving the armature around, and if I select over here and do some more movements, um, it's going to animate between them. That's basically how animating in 3D works. Um, I'm going to delete these, though, because we're going to do an even easier way to manipulate this armature. Uh, Alt-Rotate Alt R will set it back to the way it was. Um, so in edit mode, I'm going to the tip of each uh, bone at the end of each arm, um, setting the cursor to that area, and just adding a new, completely unattached bone. It, it as of right now, it's not even affecting the armature. Um, these are going to be our IK control bones. So back in pose mode, select the bone and the control bone and then the bone next to it. It has to be in that order and press Shift I. 
have to add an IK control. This is going to actually control down the entire length of the chain. Um, makes it a lot easier, but uh, we have to set in the bone constraint, set the chain length to the length of the arm so that it controls the arm and nothing else, otherwise it'll just get crazy. Okay, I'm not going to do everything, but um, now you see if I animate, I can just move each IK controller instead of moving every single bone and you get this fluid animation that works pretty well, um, pretty quickly. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is add a subdivision surface modifier. Um, that's just going to round out our character a little bit. If we render, we get this character. He's rounded out. We've got the lines. Uh, you can create your cartoon this way.